गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी हैव विद अस डॉक्टर रविंदर डिमरी सर विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट अ वेरी कॉमन क्लिनिकल साइन व्हिच वी यूज इन आवर ऑर्थोपेडिक क्लिनिक्स मॉर्निंग सर मॉर्निंग सो हरप्रीत व्हाट डू यू वांट मी टू डिस्कस सर वी हैव दिस वीडियो ऑफ अ पेशेंट हु केम टू अस विद सम लॉजिकल कंप्लेंट कंप्लेनिंग ऑफ सम नमनेस एंड पैरेस्थीसियाज इन हर Uh, uh in her in her hand mainly on the ha- only one half of the uh hand okay so, which half the ulnar half of ulnar the hand half. so you you are suspecting a uh, possibly ulnar nerve involvement yes and uh, you want to confirm with some provocative test where exactly is the lesion is yes. that your aim yes yes yeah so uh, and what is that uh, uh, what is the test you are trying to perform so this is the video Uh-huh. of the test which we did mm-hmm. in the clinic mm-hmm. so um, we are doing the classical tenal's nerve percussion test mm-hmm. and trying to find out the uh, location of the lesion okay and i can see that this patient is actually uh, telling although it's muted that she is getting same mm. symptoms mm. of tingling and numbness possibly mm. uh, uh, which she gets normally by mm. your provocative when you percussing on the mm. ulnar nerve yeah mm. yes sir and that's the uh, <coughs> your uh, tenal test mm. so a uh, lot of students get confused about tenal test because tenal test we use uh, in, in in two different scenario one is when you got compressive neuropathy like carpal tunnel and ulnar nerve mm. and one is when you want to assess the regeneration of the nerve yes sir. and they are bit slightly different mm. uh, in when you talking about the compressive neuropathy let's say you doing tenal at carpal tunnel mm. or compressive nerve at uh, elbow which is your cubital tunnel yes. and sometime you can also get compressive neuropathy of radial nerve around mm. the uh, around the elbow mm. or posterior interosseous nerve around the elbow or uh, then you you actually percussing on the suspected area and since the nerve is irritable because of the compression you get the same symptoms Yes. so this is one tenal uh, sign or tenal mm. test the mm. other test is completely different which is we talking about regeneration of the nerve mm. and that tenal sign is is w- you want to see where is the nerve regenerated up to yes yeah and then uh, you want to see whether this tenal sign is progressing or not yes yeah? yes so progressive tenal sign is very 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 mm. important it, it is telling you that nerve is Uh, regenerating mm-hmm. with your expected uh, time frame whatever 1 mm per day or whatever you want to uh, uh, say yes yes sir so uh, in classical compressive neuropathy you actually uh, do the tenal sign where exactly it is compressed so in carpal tunnel you will uh, compress the uh, median nerve around the wrist yeah and in cubital tunnel behind the elbow where it is most likely compressed yeah, yeah. and then you get to produce so what happened that that is one tenal sign what happened in the nerve injuries uh, it is it, it is showing you different uh, things so let's talk a little bit about nerve injuries and tenal signs so if you can just show me the next slide which i made mm-hmm. so for that you have to basically understand the uh, anatomy of the nerve yeah so if you see this nerve can you point me to uh, the uh, cell body yes sir yeah cell body. and and then the the exon which is yes, going sir. down there yes sir and then these are your uh, myelin hmm. yeah and then in between the myelin these nodes what are these nodes called uh, roads of N- ranvier ranvier yeah so yes. you got exon with myelin with nodes of ranvier and then hmm. you got con- di- three connective layer yes. so around the individual exon the connective layer is called endoneuron and and if number of uh, exon club together in a bundle mm. and that bundle is fascicle is called perineuron mm. and then number of perineuron all together is called epineuron yep. and uh, depending on the injuries uh, you can classify with how wh- what is the type of injury you can mm. classify them into severity depending on whether the connective tissue of this endo peri or epi is affected or not or whether it's just a physiological block so if you just show me the next uh, slide so initial classification was uh, by sedan which he classically say neuropraxia so yes, mm, neuropraxia mean can you see that uh, just the block of the uh, uh, myelin block here or physiological block mm. in this the exon is going all the way down without any problem 
yeah yes. and it will either go to next neuron as a synapse or go to neuromuscular junction yeah yes. so whereas in exonotomesis the exon is damaged mm. the 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 covering are still intact the, the connective, connective tissue. tissue covering mm. and in neurotomesis uh, everything is gone so uh, every all all covering is also gone but you can see the problem here is that the the there can be a different grades between these two that some covering is gone some not gone mm. so this classification then sudden has further revised by sunderland if you go ahead with the slides that this exonotomesis could be in in different type so neuropraxia is same where there is just a block so the in sunderland classification if if only exon is gone and endoneurium is still intact that is called type 2 it is still exonotomesis but then endo endo is gone and peri is preserved that is your type 3 and if epi is preserved mm. endo and peri, peri is, is gone, gone. epi is preserved this is type 4 so mm. you you understand how the classification has been modified so in sudden uh, and sunderland uh, the type 1 is the same same and type, type 5 is the is same, the same. Type neurotomesis, 5 is neurotomesis, neurotomesis and type 1 is but the it is exonotomesis where it can be few further grading and that's how it has been divided. Yes? Yes, sir. Uh, so let's uh, go back to uh, where we were. Uh, so let's, let, 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 uh, that, that, that's fine. Yes, sir. So what happened when you get nerve damage? What happened if you got just a neuropraxia, mm. which is, it could be as simple as you and me sitting in this chair, and uh, we're sitting on our bottom for half an hour, and then we get paresthesia in our feet, uh, tingling and numbness. Uh, or you say your foot is sleepy uh, and you wake up and you just uh, you, you stand up and you walk and you just recover so that is a neuropraxia that can happen for a few minutes or a few days or a few weeks uh, and that is because there is no axonal damage there mm. so the classical difference between neuropraxia and the other two axonal neurotomesis that if there is an axonotomesis or neurotomesis or any damage to axon the nerve injury classically causes valerian degeneration. So this whole nerve will die right up to the next synapse or next neuromuscular junction. So this is all going all the way down to die there. If there is a neuropraxia, there is no valerian degeneration. Whereas if there is exonotomesis and neurotomesis, there is valerian degeneration. In neurotomesis, since everything is disrupted, it is almost impossible for this nerve to repair, uh, re regenerate, regenerate itself unless you repair it. Yeah? Whereas in exontomesis, you can see here that this nerve actually uh, has got some connective tissue present. So it is likely that this can uh, repair, especially, you know, the, the, the type 1, type, uh, type 2, and type 3, this can repair. Maybe type 4 will never repair, never regenerate. regenerate. But these can regenerate. So when they regenerate, they gen regenerate with the um, uh, with the uh, with a slow process of say one first happen is valerian degeneration and then start regeneration, and regeneration happen say one millimeter per day, yeah, yes. gradually. Yes. So when the regeneration reaches, let's say from here to here, the you if you go from here your tunnel sign here 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 it will be negative negative and suddenly it become positive here next day if you do the same tunnel sign or or three day you go three millimeter more now you do tunnel sign and it has come here so from here to here tunnel sign has moved so it gives you a good evidence that this nerve is regenerating whereas in this case there is no tunnel sign so if you say in the examiner that oh my diagnosis is neuropraxia and I see uh, progressive new, uh, tunnel sign. That means you don't understand the uh, degeneration, valerian well, degeneration and regeneration. Tunnel sign will only happen, or progressive tunnel sign will only happen in exonotomesis, not in neuropraxia. Also, have you heard of motor march? Yes, motor what march. What is motor march? So motor march is when the nerve is regenerating. Mm -hmm. So the, the proximally uh, supplied muscles uh, get uh, start contracting first and then the distance then, yeah, yeah let, let's see in this ground let's say this is one muscle here yeah mm -hmm. and this is one muscle here so on on, on say let's say five six days this will start uh, coming back mm. and then on some other day three four days later this will so there's a motor march 
in neuropraxia because this is a conduction block you get up and all everything recovers simultaneously mm -hmm. whereas motor march is classically seen in exonotomesis similarly the tunnel march mm -hmm. is classically seen in exonotomesis you will not see tunnel march here yeah mm -hmm. yes. so can you dif uh, can you uh, understand the difference between the this tunnel sign and your nerve compression tunnel sign yes now compression just irritation, irritation. There. whereas when you doing your tunnel sign for your uh, nerve regeneration you start very distally and you note where is the tunnel sign and then in next clinical setting after a week two weeks you again note where it is coming and if this is marching with the motor march mm. you know the recovery is happening mm. if it has stopped mm. and you, you can see in this uh, uh, type 4 or sometime in type 3 it might start with a little bit mm. and then maybe damage is too much that it is not going further mm. then you say it is not recovering in neurotomesis obviously it will not go because there is no regeneration mm. but in these it may start and then stop and then that is the time you say that clinically it's not recovering and then you might get help of neurophysiological studies, mm. uh, your EMG and nerve conduction studies. Mm. But if it is marching, the both motor march and tunnel march is happening, you're very happy and you say it's recovering and uh, I can wait and this likely to repair. So do you understand the difference between the two? Yes. Yes. Mm. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank I think you. it was very useful. Thank you very much.